So Luma is an LED light therapy commonly used in skincare for anti-aging and acne treatment, as well as for pain management, hair restoration, and wound healing. With low level light therapy starting to be used in eye care for my Bohmian gland dysfunction and dry eye, is this a therapy that could help with the ocular conditions as well? In today's video, I'll review the current literature and compare the Saluma to recognize therapeutic levels for dry eye syndrome, chalazia, and my Bohmian gland dysfunction. Welcome to Eye School with Dr. D, where my goal is to arm you with the knowledge you need to take control of your eye health and have the best vision possible. Like and subscribe for videos every week. You've made it to eye school with me, Dr. D. In today's lesson, we're diving into the Saluma as a potential therapy for dry eye syndrome. This channel is all about eye education and it's also about community. So I would love nothing more than for you to share your experiences and expertise with LED light therapies like Saluma down below so we can learn from each other. And if you found this video because you were searching for information on dry eye syndrome, I've got an entire playlist that I'll leave right here for you to check out. There's all kinds of education there about dry eye and blepharitis that I hope you'll find useful. Low level light therapy is light modulation or photobiomodulation technology that has been used for many years in various fields of medicine. The emission of blue LED light specific wavelength is effective against bacteria and demodex on the skin and lashes, as well as sebaceous activity in the epidermis of the skin. Red light LED specific wavelengths affect the sebum quality or oil quality, as well as oil expression. In terms of the meibomian glands, LED light causing softening of the sebum and or better ability to express sebum would be very beneficial for dry eye syndrome. And meibomian gland dysfunction, where impacted sebum is causing an issue with the tear film. The added benefit of reducing bacterial load and or the biofilm along with helping eradicate or control demodex is super appealing for us in patients with ocular surface disease. And by the way, I'm gonna link my low level light therapy video here because I did an entire video on it and I'll link down below or up above as well my meibomian gland dysfunction video so you can get some background on why sebum quality is so important. So LED light is generally very well tolerated and painless and can be a really nice alternative to other therapies that are comparatively a little bit more what I like to call spicy. So the answer to the question of whether or not LED therapy is effective in a particular tissue really comes down to the wavelength of the light used, the proximity to the skin, and the length of the treatment. That's why these LED devices, devices can vary so, so, so widely. It's not so much the strength of the light necessarily, although that can play a role, but it's how close it is to the skin, how long the treatment is, and the specific wavelengths being used. The effectivity is influenced by those factors, and there's certainly lots and lots of variance between devices in all three of those variables. So consider, for instance, the over-the-counter masks and full face shields like those I've discussed in previous videos. So I personally have a Dr. Gross skincare mask. I also have his eye mask and I have his full face mask. These treatments in the Dr. Gross mask are very comparable wavelengths to that of the professional grade treatments. There is inherently no difference in an LED light in a professional grade mask versus a home mask, but there may be a difference in the concentration of lights, how many are there, the length of the treatments or the proximity to the skin. In the case of at home masks, the length of treatment is only about three minutes. So over a sustained period of using them every day, once a day or twice a day, there may be a benefit over years, but it has less effectivity in the short term than say a 15 minute or a 30 minute in office treatment. The effectivity of light treatment is not power out point, but it's energy absorption. So it doesn't matter how bright my light is, but how much energy is actually absorbed by the target tissue, and that's what makes that, li that light treatment impactful. I'm by no means the expert on this, but I've looked into two specific masks today. The Marco Equinox is a low-level light therapy mask used specifically in eye care settings. It uses both red and blue lights to harness the ability to change the sebum as well as clear bacteria and demodex. 
The blue light in this device is at 417 nanometers, red 633, and yellow 590. The company states that their irradiation output, output is 100 megawatts per centimeter squared, and the quantity absorbed by the skin is 110 joules per centimeter squared. Saluma is using three wavelengths at once as well. So we've got 465 at 80 hertz output for blue, 640 nanometers at 680 hertz output for red, and 880 nanometers or 800 hertz for near infrared for a 30 minute duration. This is compared to a 15 minute duration for the eye care specific mass. The Saluma contains 345 lights um, and is approved by the FDA for multiple indications including arthritis, muscle spasm, muscle and joint pain, muscle tissue tension, joint and muscle stiffness, a lot of joint and muscle stuff, diminished local circulation, and inflammatory acne. It does not have FDA clearance for MGD and dry eye specifically, so this would be considered off-label use. And ultimately, with all LED treatments, the effectivity does depend on how the technician places the device as well as the time of the treatment. I have been using Saluma in my aesthetic clinic for rosacea and skin care uses, and we've been introducing it to our dry eye patients as well. Early indicators from our patients, this is not a research study, this is just anecdotal evidence, is that it is a relaxing treatment comparatively to IPL. We've done it on some patients after their IPL therapies and they felt like their recovery from IPL was quicker. But I will be the first to tell you that more research needs to be done in the area of low level light therapy, especially in the field of eye care. And perhaps that's a study that I should do in my clinic. I'm definitely set up for it and that's something I'm considering doing. But before we have widespread acceptance um, of LED technology with eye care professionals, I suspect that we'll need a lot more peer reviewed research. So has your doctor suggested LED light therapy for your dry eye? Make sure to comment below with your experience. I hope that helped with understanding low level light therapy, Saluma, and the Marco Equinox. That's gonna be it for today's iSchool lesson. I'll see you next time. Class is dismissed.